Good morning, everybody. In this second part of the Contagion Convertibles course, uh, we'll go a bit deeper on some of the quantitative aspects. We're going to leave actually the Black Shoals trails and do something else on pricing cocoa bonds. Uh, we also cover deeper the regulatory aspects, and we should not forget actually that regulation actually is actually at the root of the product. We're also going to cover uh, the bail-in bonds and explain why actually it's a completely different animal, and unfortunately it, uh, it's very often forgotten. Uh, and these are the things we're going to cover today in the second part of the, of the COCO course. Um, now, to start with, I've uh, compiled here data uh, on, uh, of, the, um, uh, of a COCO bond index. I mean, there is an investable COCO bond index which was uh, constructed by uh, early 2014 by Bank of America Merrill Lynch. Um, who have a whole set of convertible bond indices, and, but this one is a contingent uh, convertible uh, index. Before that, Credit Suisse already had its own index on uh, total returns on cocoa bonds. And I've taken the liberty to uh, project here actually the price performance of this index over the last three and a half years. This is the, the black line. Uh, it's, it's nice because it allows us to compare where cocoa bonds sit somewhere in return after the, the last uh, three years compared to equity, which is uh, the MSCI index, which is the blue line, the red line, which is the JP Morgan uh, government bond index, and also I uh, looked where we were somewhere on high yields. Uh, this just gives me like an overview of that cocoa bonds, after all, they have not been performing that bad. Of course, uh, we should put things in a historical context that actually investors are yield hungry, and very often for the wrong reasons actually you're chasing this particular product. If uh, I take the same data, but I transform it into, let's say, um, a risk return chart, uh, capital asset pricing model, whatever you want. So on the vertical axis, I have the analyzed return of the three different, the four different product categories. So cocoa bonds, MSCI index, which represents the equity markets, the JP Morgan government bond index, the JP Morgan high yield index. So on this, uh, on this plot, I can, on the vertical axis, like I said, I have the analyzed return. On the horizontal axis, you have realized volatility, and it shows you actually that, well, return and risk go hand in hand, and actually my realized volatility of my cocoa bonds is sitting in the neighborhood of 9%, which is twice the volatility, realized volatility of the high yield bonds, which is still less than equity markets, but it's, it's telling us a particular story. But it's telling us a wrong story. We should be very careful looking at the historical volatility for cocoa bonds, because you're actually looking at, uh, uh, you're using like a, a normal, uh, one single moment uh, of volatility of standard deviation of returns to study it, an instrument which is actually um, has a lot of fat tail risk. Yeah? And uh, so it's telling us one point of the story. And then I, I would love to refer you to the concept of iceberg risk, where volatility is what you see, and tail risk is actually something which is there, but actually you don't see it at all. And we can, uh, for sure, I can say that the real risks of uh, high yield bonds, and especially cocoa bonds, are higher than actually what we are taught to believe actually based on historical uh, performances. So that's why I took the liberty to, to take these two big arrows saying, well, the, the real risks actually are higher and investors actually uh, beware. This, this graph should act as a caveat actually on, uh, for all of those actually who want uh, who are using traditional asset pricing models actually in portfolio construction. Yeah. So that thing doesn't really go at all.